On this week's episode of Around the Horn, we discover the true origins of this guy, Gary Gateman. Jared Safran here with Gateman manager Cooper Ferris. Okay, Coop, let's look back over this past week. You had the All-Star game, six games for you guys in total. So not many off days because you guys had seven reps on the West team in the All-Star game. What was your opinion? You were at the game. How proud were you of the way that your guys represented Wareham and Harwich? Well, I think everybody had a good game. I think all our pitching staff did well. Nobody gave up any runs. I think it was only one hit. And amongst a bunch of them and it was a you know a tough pitch and uh, you know uh, of course Polka was the MVP and uh, he had three hits just missed an, another one he uh, got, got a little quick with his swing but he had a great great uh, great time up there and uh, Ty Ross got a hit uh, looking at uh, Mott, Mott was on base I think three times should have had the game winner there with that hit by pitch they called back but uh you know it, it was uh it was a good showing Tyler Horan hit the ball hard twice uh going in didn't want him to play much outfield because of a hamstring injury he's had but uh he got five innings in and and uh got out of there unscathed so that was a good that was a win for us there so uh I think everybody had a good good uh experience up there seven all-stars that's a lot a lot of people didn't think necessarily with this team being three games under 500, that Wareham didn't deserve that many guys. Was there any of that sentiment really at the game? No, not really, I don't think. Uh, you know, there's been years where we've had really good records and didn't get but three. You know, it's just a matter of stats. And, uh, you know, we those bullpen guys were all under a one ERA, and, uh, you know, and then uh, the hitters were you know, all above 300, so it's hard to argue with that. And uh, you got two guys in there that had you know, nine and ten home runs and leading the league in RBIs. I mean, you got to have those guys on the team, and and uh, you know, it's just one of those uh, deals where it just worked out like it worked out. YD was the same way. If you look over there on their side, they had eight All Stars, and you know, they're in third. So, you know, it's a situation where, you know, it, it uh, just the way it, you know, it turned out this year. Enough about the All Star game. Let's talk about the games <coughs> that actually matter in the standings. A three and three week for you guys. All three losses at home. Two out of the three wins were on the road. You guys are now five and thirteen at home this season, but eleven and six on the road. That seems like more than just a coincidence at this point, doesn't it? Well, no, I don't know. It's just one of those fluke things that comes out that way. Again, you know, it's baseball, and baseball, you know, you just, you know, our field's a lot bigger. Uh, uh, you know, it's bigger than most of them in the league, and and uh, we've got a lot of power guys, and. Uh, you know, we tend to get it, you know, smaller fields. It generally helps us out. It's just, just the way things turned out this year. You don't know what you're getting. You know, anytime you recruit a team, you, you're depending on other people's words and you're depending on, you know, uh, scouts and you're depending on head coaches at colleges. And, and, you know, it's hard to do it without going out and see everybody. You can't really design your team like, uh, you know, by going out and traveling around the country looking and picking them up, you know, like, that so uh, generally you just try to try to mix and match and most of our guys that were uh, base hit running type guys were injured this year so uh, this year all the power hitters got here next year it may be no power hitters and all the you know hitters come so it's just a just the luck of the draw most of the time it's like you know just whatever you can get so uh, that's basically uh, a lot of people don't realize that they think I'm just doing this you know <laughs> like it's just you know like I did this on purpose but it's you know we had uh, you know we had a lot of injuries and uh, before they ever got here so uh, you know we just had to depend on the power sometimes you just got to go what's there you know and, uh -huh. and the power is what's getting us there and that's why you see what's happening at our park uh, you know we've hit some balls hard at our park that would have been out at other parks and uh, you know, here we, uh, you know, we just, 
don't seem to get the timely two out hit like I talked to you all about before. You know, it just uh, seemed like the home run. We're depending on it a lot. But again, you know, that goes back to the luck of the draw of the team. So uh, you mentioned all the power hitters that you guys have. The lefty trio of Kyle <laughs> Schwarber, Daniel Palka, and Tyler Horan have been really prolific this season. Is that the probably the best trio of power hitters that you've had in your 12 years at Wareham? Well, definitely there's more home runs than we've had in the past. Uh, we had a pretty good uh, bunch there in, in 2001 and two with uh, Aaron Hill and Murphy and Merton. You know, all three of those guys played in the big leagues or still playing in the big leagues. And uh, those three guys were pretty, pretty prolific too. But, uh, you know, they didn't put up the home run numbers these three guys have. At what point did you say to yourself, okay, I don't really care that they're all left-handed. I'm going to bat them back to back to back in the order. Well, you, you see what's going on with us. You've watched, you know, uh, you know, 35 games now that, you know, we don't have very many right-handed hitters. Most of our right-handed hitters didn't, were hurt and didn't show up up here this summer. So, uh, again, you know, it wasn't a situation where we planned it that way. It just the way the 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 way it dic you know the way it's been dictated to us we just got to go with what we got and I think our lefties have hit left-handed pitching I mean we've seen you know out of the 35 games we've probably seen you know probably 29 left-handed starters so uh, and we've hit them so uh, you know that hadn't really been the problem this year so I think uh, I think it's made them better you know as players because. You know, they, at college you probably don't see. Uh, yesterday we had a seven seven man left handed lineup in there, and uh, you know it's just again the luck of the draw. You guys had a notable departure this past weekend as well in Connor Wade. You were using him in sort of a closer's role for the past two seasons. How do you think his departure this season will affect the way you and Terry manage the back end of that bullpen? Well. We've kind of moved some things around. I know she probably noticed it last night. We talked about it and shuffled some things around. Connor's a great kid. Uh, his innings were up. His coach called, wanted him to come home. He's, you know, he threw 140 innings for Arizona. I know we haven't used him that much here, you know. So uh, I know it wasn't because of us. I think it was just more because of, uh, you know, what they did at Arizona with him. But uh, you know, I, I think we'll be fine. We've got hopefully we've got another guy coming in here this. Uh, this uh, week, and uh, we'll see what happens with that. And uh, you know, we got a new guy in, uh, lefty, that's going to help us in the starting role, which we had tried with Holder. And Jonathan's just so good out of the pen, you know, it, it good. And Toby stepped up finally last night, good, and he's had six strikeouts, I think, in two innings. So, <laughs> you know, we we need that. We need, you know, last night, you know, Chatham left a small village out there. They uh, they had some. A lot of chances, but what was big, what we hadn't done in the past, is we made the big pitches and got the strikeouts and, uh, when we need them. So, uh, you know, hopefully that'll carry over tonight. We'll see. We didn't make very many big good pitches against Katuit, so uh, we'll see if they maybe figure some things out. Also, with the departure of Kurt McCune this past week. Are you guys going to stick with the five-man rotation for the rest of this season? Well, no, we've got the new guy, the uh, you know Dylan Stoops. So we'll see uh, see how he's going to get a start. We'll see what happens with him. Uh, last year at this time, we were pretty much in the same situation. We brought Jake Boyd in from Stetson from the Valley League, and and uh, he gave us an eight inning, one hit performance against Bourne in the playoffs. So uh, you know, hopefully Dylan will do the same thing. Ben Fontana joined by Gateman second baseman Andrew Bishop who comes to us via Jacksonville State and Andrew I know that you came here late and you got a call when you were eating breakfast so what was it like what was your decision to come to the Cape? Well I was just sitting there it was like maybe nine in the morning and coach Polk called who's helping out up here and he's like Andrew I haven't talked to him in a while so it's kind of weird that he called and I was like hey coach and he's like hey how would you like to play in the Cape? I was like Cape Cod League? He's like yeah I was like uh yeah I'll come it's like count me in. So it was very shocking but exciting at the same time, I guess. So I'm glad to be here. Jacksonville State, not in Florida, northern Alabama, where Andrew's from, a southern boy. Your first name's actually William, but your middle name's Andrew. So what was that decision to be called Drew instead of Will or something? I have no idea. <laughs> I, ever since I can remember, my parents always called me Andrew, so I just went with it.
Okay, Andrews also in the OVC, which is the Ohio Valley Conference at Jacksonville State. He was named a freshman All-American, also has a twin brother on the team. First of all, what was that honor to be liked, named a freshman All-American? It was pretty awesome. Not many guys get to be named freshman All-American and get a pretty good season. And especially going from high school to college, that big jump and to be able to sustain a good season throughout all 56 games or whatever, it's it was pretty fun, and I'm glad I got to make that team. And I mentioned your twin brother, Michael, so he was also on the team, and he looks exactly like you. <laughs> yep, he's just taller, which I'm still mad at him for. He's like 6'3", and he can run like a deer, so I'm still jealous about that, but yeah, it's fun playing with my twin brother. And you also uh, have a 4.0 in our accounting major. I mean, <laughs> the accolades go on and on. You're also a smart kid, so I'm yeah. sure, I mean, that's also a good thing, right? It is. Uh, Coach Case didn't have to worry about me in the classroom, I guess, but yeah, Accounting is pretty tough, but so far I've been able to handle it. Hopefully I can keep that up. And here on the Cape, I know we said you got here late, but what's the experience been like so far? Oh, it's been incredible. The weather's awesome. The, the teammates are awesome. The other teams we're playing are really good, so the competition's there. I know it's always fun getting to come in and hang out with a bunch of guys like yourself and just kind of play baseball every day or you know on off days go to the beach or play poker or whatever. So it's been a lot of fun. Andrew Bishop, having a lot of fun, and so are we. You sure you're not Michael? I'm pretty sure. Now we're joined by Gateman pitcher Barrett Assen starting this year, back with the Gateman for another year, back in 2012. You are here in Wareham in 2011, so what was that decision like to come back here? I mean, it was an easy decision. Uh, last year uh, when I left, Coach Coop asked me if I wanted to come back next year, and you know, I jumped all over it. And, uh, I mean, it's a great place to play. Uh, you know, the fans are, are so supportive here in Wareham, and, and it's a great program. Uh, so I was excited and, and jumped right on that. And this year you brought your teammate Colby Suggs with you, your uh, bullpen mate with the Razorbacks. So did you convince him to come along or was he asked as well? Uh, well, we saw him pitch in the fall and one of our coaches was like, hey, uh, you know, you think he can pitch in the Cape? And I was like, yeah. I was like, you know, call Coach Coop and let, let's get him up there. So so we did and uh, he's here with us now. Yeah, and last season you did a little relief work with the Gateman, a little starting this year, pretty much all starting so far. And at school it's all been the bullpen. So what do you prefer and what's the difference? It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, next year, I think I'm going to try to be a starter at school. So my coaches wanted me to come up here and you know get acclimated and, and uh, used to starting. So that's what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. now. A little bit about Barrett. He played football and basketball in high school, but you decided to play baseball. So why this sport over those two? Uh, it's the sport that came easiest. Uh, you know, I mean, football and basketball are both great sports, but I'd, I really didn't have to work hard at baseball until now. And so uh, you know, I like the challenge that baseball presents and. Uh, you know, it's just a great sport, and I enjoy it more. You were all conference in football and basketball, though. So, do you still play from time to time? <laughs> I do. I, I go to the hyper all the time, and you know, we play basketball during our breaks and stuff. Mm -hmm. But you know, we enjoy it. And so, finally, come down the stretch run here. I know you came a little late with the game because you guys were in the super regionals. So, what are you going to work on most in this last week, week and a half of the season? Uh, probably just, you know, I don't know. Probably making friendships more. You know, this is a great time to you know meet lifelong friends. Uh, you know, we can work around on our baseball stuff on the field, you know, and off the field, you know, just have a great time and enjoy the Cape and, you know, it's the best best league out here and, you know, we're just going to try and enjoy it. Well, now it's your second year, so what's been your best experience so far through this through these two years? Yeah, I'd have to say it's meeting friends, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from Connor Wade from Arizona and uh, Kendall Graveman from Mississippi State. Uh, you know, everybody here is a great guy and I just enjoy it all. Welcome to Spillane Field for tonight's Cape Cod Lit Baseball League game between the visiting Brewster Whitecaps and your Wareham Gateman. Growing up in the area, everyone knows the Gateman, everyone loves the Gateman, and being a, a, a youth baseball player in the area, everyone really is really aware of what's going on at Spillane Field. And, um, you know, it's everyone's dream to someday play for the Gateman if you grow up playing baseball in this area. When John was sick, uh, they wanted somebody to sort of spell him between the innings, reading the the public service announcements and the raffle and that sort of thing. So I was able to do that one summer and that became my role. And, um, you know, I sat in there with John and, and you know, John Wilde is always going to be the voice, voice of the Wareham Gateman, no matter who's behind the microphone. Um, that's just, you know, he's one of the best. So, um, so reading the public service announcements and I was there in case John um, wasn't able to be the public address announcer and as hot as it was no matter what he was going through you know he stuck it out every game and, and I, I was just so impressed by his toughness and you know he's just quite a guy so 
uh, when he passed, um, just getting to sit in that chair, it, it's the best seat in the house. Uh, it's just such a privilege and an honor to sit where he sat. How many people can say they learn from the two best? Um, you know, and people that know and people in the organization, they won't argue that John Wilde and Carl Bean were probably two of the best voices in baseball. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot, of, a lot of people that would agree with that and would not argue that. But um, working with Carl was also just a special experience and, um, you know, he was just such a character. He, he told me that, you know, don't overthink it, be clear, um, don't be a cheerleader. I mean, he was just had such a sense of humor and, you know, he's another guy that's greatly missed this year. Um, you know, I, I was more than willing to turn the turn the mic over to him every time he came down last year, and you know he's greatly missed this year. I did have the opportunity to sit with him at Fenway Park, and it was unbelievable uh, to hear your voice over that big park. Uh, it just you know it was unbelievable. Um, Another just special guy and one of the many special people I've met working with the Gateman. You know, I hope to always be with the Gateman. Uh, I'm pursuing my master's degree uh, in school counseling to become a school guidance counselor. That means, you know, summer's off and I can't picture myself anywhere in the summer, but, you know, I love baseball, I love this organization, love this team. You know, I, I Hope to remain with the team for the foreseeable future. Ben Fontana here at White House Field, home of the Harwich Mariners and the 2012 Cape Cod League All-Star Game. So let's go inside, take a look around, and see what's going on. This opportunity obviously means a lot. A lot of scouts are here, a lot of people in general watching. What does it mean to you? Oh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very uh, it's something that you know is very honored to be a part of. Uh, you know, with all the history in the Cape League and everything. It's you know, it's definitely you know a fun experience. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Just uh, seeing people pack in. It's been good. Great, great experience so far. Hope that that continues to be fun. Absolutely. You know, it's a great opportunity to come here and uh, be recognized for all the hard work and everything. You know, a lot of great players here. So we're just excited to watch everybody else play and uh, do our jobs whenever we get in. It's a great opportunity to be selected with the best players out of the out of the best players in the nation. So it's definitely a a good experience, a nice reward. Yeah, you know, it's just exciting to be out here with you know the best guys in the league and uh, you know get to showcase your talent. Swing, better, better, swing, better, better, swing, better, better, swing. Coop, first of all, you've been doing this for 12 years here on the Cape, so has it lost any of its luster or you're still having fun? No, I'm still having fun. It's fun to watch these guys, and this is a big day for them, you know, with all the scouts here and all the fans here. It's just a just an outstanding event for all these guys, and, uh, you know, it's a culmination of the season for them. You know, you got seven guys here, probably more than you've ever had all uh, since you've been here for a dozen years, so <laughs> how's that feeling? It feels real good. They deserve it. They've worked hard this year, and uh, all the guys that are here deserve being here, and uh, we thought we had a couple more that deserved it too, but some better numbers were put up, but, uh, you know, I think think they've all had a, had a good year. Swing, better, better, swing. Swing, better, better, swing. Fenway would have been cool to play at, definitely like coming out of the dugout, the same places that your heroes come from, but it's still just a great experience to be here and selected as an All-Star. Were you a little disappointed that the All-Star game wasn't there this year? Uh, you know, it's alright. I mean, it's just, it's more important to, you know, to be a part of the just the All-Star game and, you know, everything that's going on surrounding it. Oh, it's fine. I mean, it's, it's, uh, the crowd's going to be big and, you know, it's going to be the same people here, so uh, it's just a different venue. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's kind of cool that it's back on the Cape. I feel like we might get a little bit more fans. It'll be fun. Swing, go! Swing, better, better, swing, better, better, swing, better, better, swing. Swing, better, better, swing, better, better, swing, better, better, swing. Swing, better, better, swing. There's got to be a lot of scouts here, too, so is that any added pressure? No, I mean, they've been at all our games, so I mean, they know what we can do. We just got to go out there and uh, do what we've been doing all season, which is uh, trying to shut it down out of the pen. Yep. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Uh, you know, we pitch uh, at school with a lot of fans, so you know, this is another day for all of us. 
Uh, I usually try to keep that kind of stuff out of my mind and just play for how I've been playing because what's, that's what's got me here. So that's the same thing with staying within yourself and trying not to think and do too much. Joined by Gateman starting pitcher Jared Ruxer out of Louisville. Jared, you started the first game for the Gateman here in the 2012 season. Did you feel any added pressure to get the Gateman off to a good start? Um, no, not really. Uh, I just you know wanted to get the season going well, but I, I wasn't as nervous as I thought I might be. Uh, coming up here in the Cape, I kind of felt nervous uh, warming up in the bullpen, but on the field it just kind of worked. Oh, well, the reason that Jared started for the Gateman was he was the 2012 Big East Rookie of the Year coming in as a freshman to the Cardinals. How honored were you to get that award? Uh, it, it was pretty cool. I mean, um, I'm I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it, you know. Uh, I think our team really did a, played a big role in that, getting me the eight and three record that I had, that uh, really won me that award. All right, and Jared, you guys also made the College World Series. Any interesting stories from the tournament? Well, yeah, we made we made the NCAA tournament, uh, not the College World Series, unfortunately. But uh, no, I mean, we we got taken down by Connor Wade's. Okay, so uh, Arizona team and, and they were good. They deserved it. That was a that was a great team. It was a good experience. Uh, Jared from Louisville also got drafted out of high school in the 2011 MLB draft. So what was that process like to be drafted and then decide to go back to school? It was interesting. It wasn't too difficult for me though. Um, it was just kind of cool to be drafted and go through the experience once and to be a little bit more comfortable with it uh, this next time coming up. But um, I'm glad I made the decision that I made. Okay, well, here on the Cape League, he's started a bunch of games so far for us, but he comes out of Indianapolis, Indiana. He's a big Colts fan, and his favorite athlete is Peyton Manning, who's now on the Denver Broncos. So you said you're going to follow Peyton still in Denver? Yeah, absolutely. Love Peyton. Always will. I hope he wins the Super Bowl in Denver. <laughs> he's also a big fan of Reggie Miller, and now that you're here in New England, a lot of Celtics fans aren't big fans of Reggie Miller or Peyton Manning. So how are you taking that? I'm taking it just <laughs> fine. You know, I'm not going to shy away from him. I'll always be a fan. All right, so Jared Ruxer is still sticking to his guns here on Wareham Gateman. Now joined by yet another Gateman pitcher, this time reliever Dan Tobik out of the University of Tennessee Martin. Started a couple games for the Gateman earlier in the season. Now he's working out of the bullpen, Dan. How is that difference working out of the bullpen now from starting early in the season? Uh, it is different, but, you know, I just like throwing. So as long as I'm not on the mound, I just like to compete. And um, But it is different. You train a little bit different. You're running, you're throwing, you're lifting. The whole process is a little bit different, but uh, I'm used to it from college, so it, it's all a lot of fun. Now we asked Connor and Colby a couple questions. The bullpen seems to have a lot of fun, so do you have any interesting stories from the bullpen? Um, yeah, the best are probably when a pitcher doesn't have a good outing. He comes down here, and this is like our little... Uh, our own little kingdom out here where we can throw stuff and kick stuff and, and you know let some steam off. So we have plenty of uh, throwing objects that you have to keep your head on a swivel for sometimes. All right, we'll watch out here at Spillane Field in the, in the coming weeks. But uh, from Tennessee, Martin, uh, you pitched really well last season, so you got invited to the Cape this year. How was that process, knowing that you're playing with some of the best guys in college baseball? Uh, it's a blessing. It's awesome. This place is it's real sweet. And, yeah, you know, when... Um, uh, when you know there's one of the top ACC batters up and, or the top SEC batters coming up to up to bat, you know a guy from a conference like mine, we really want to go up there and give it our best and see what we can do against the top guys. So, uh, but it's just yeah, it's awesome being up here. Dan's also got a pretty interesting backstory. His dad played in the major league with a couple teams, especially the Detroit Tigers in AAA. Your dad met your mom with the Tigers organization. She was a sports writer. He was a player. So, I mean, do you tell a lot of people that story? <laughs> No, it, I mean, if people ask, I tell them, but, you know, it's just kind of a hard, it's hard to bring it up on your own. You don't want to, you know, start that conversation. But if people ask, you know, I got no problem telling them about it. Yeah, and also I heard an interesting story about your glove that you still use your dad's <laughs> glove from the 80s. Yeah, actually, uh, mid-70s, actually. It's one of the gloves he used in the minors. The glove that he used in the bigs was uh, my sister's softball glove, and she kind of ruined that. So I, I got one of his minor league gloves. Dan Tobik, watch out for his glove here at Spillane Field. Somehow somebody had gotten into a conversation about, oh, we should have a, a mascot. And Tom Gay and I, we leaned in on the railing and he was going to, he said, we're going to have, we're going to have a mascot, Alan. You're going to be the mascot, meaning me. I would be inside the costume. And I know he was joking because I can barely walk, you know, <laughs> and he wants me to run around on the field like a kid. And I, you know, but I thought it was a, a funny idea. And I, you know, and I said, what would you have for a mascot? What would it be? And finally I said, 
Why not just a baseball player? And, oh, that's a good idea. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Well, what are we going to call him? Well, I didn't know what to call him. We had no idea. And then I started thinking, one of our more illustrious host families uh, hosted a couple of, uh, couple of players a couple of years ago. Jonathan Smith was one of them. And you may be able to fill me in on the other one. I don't Chris remember. Walker. Chris Walker. Good. I loved Chris Walker. Uh, they were, uh, for some reason, the host family, who shall be known as Drinkwater from now on out, uh, and, and, and Chris Walker and Jonathan Smith, all got to call in each other Gary. I, no one knows why. I don't think they even know why. <laughs> okay. They got to call in each other Gary. I didn't know why. But I thought, oh, Gary Gateman. Okay, well, that could be the name for the mascot. My niece, who uh, lives in New Hampshire, and I don't get to see nearly enough, is a, is a talented little cartoonist. And she and I are friends on Facebook. And uh, she has tons of little sketches on Facebook of people, little whimsical characters that she's drawn. And I thought, her name's Meredith. And I thought, Meredith could do this. I called her up, and she said, yeah, she'd do it. So we drove up to New Hampshire, and we gave her, uh, I sat at the table with her like you, you see on television when, when the police interview some witness, and they say, oh, you know, his eyes were closer together. Make his, make his forehead higher, you know, give him bigger ears. And, and that's what I did with her. And I told her what I wanted was a face of a baseball player, very muscular, big, broad-shouldered, big-chested guy, but with a face of a guy that would play a trick on you in a second. I wanted a kind of a wisecracking guy. And I got to tell you, the little girl did perfect. So I, I just started talking to everybody I know. You know somebody that could make a costume. And one of my best friends, a guy I work with all the time, says, yeah, my sister does that stuff. I called Elaine up and uh, told her what I wanted. Finally, Gary was ready. Please stand and Now, when I, when I stop and consider, first of all, the players will tell you, he signs way more autographs than any of them. <laughs> he gets his picture taken way more times than any of them. Children, adults get the, get the biggest kick out of him. And then when Wally came this time, he met Gary, and we got some pictures of him. They were, uh, became fast friends. And Wally invited Gary to come to, it turned out it was Cape Cod Day at Fenway Park, and of course the Cape Cod League, it seemed like a natural, I guess, so they, they brought him in, and, and I gotta say, Gary's great with the children. He's, he's you couldn't ask for better. Yeah. And he's, he's quite the character. Mm -hmm.